Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night, and we're at episode 50 of the Friday Night Movie Club. And it's kind of surprising how we went, what, about 47 episodes with that old intro that everyone hated? Because now the new intro, everyone is absolutely loving it. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I think the show started wrong, and we need to start over and watch it again. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> oh, okay, totally then. missed half of it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, roll it again. Let's <laughs> No, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys do it. Standing ovation, and I'm sitting yeah. down. <laughs> we are here, uh, unfortunately, to hear. Well, maybe fortunately, depending on some people's perspective, here to talk about the latest DC uh, action film, oh. DC superhero movie, The Blue Beetle. That super famous uh, superhero that everyone knows and everyone loves, and the theaters are packed with people waiting to go see Blue Beetle right now. We got to saw it this week, and we got a, a lovely group of people here joining us to talk about this movie. So first, let's start off with our good buddy Culture Casino, who's here to talk about Blue Beetle. How you doing today, Captain K, man? <laughs> um i feel like a deer in the headlights after the intro i'm not sure i you're gonna have to give a couple minutes for the brain to return the blood to return to my brain i'm i'm what mm -hmm. yeah exactly we'll, we'll give you uh, everyone some time here our good buddy rick is joining us here uh, once again i guess there wasn't a baseball game tonight because that's the only reason why he's here yeah there, yeah there there's one next week and i think they're giving they have a giveaway so i'm not sure i'll be able to come but well, yeah good for I, them I, yeah, good. I'm here. I'm good. Just enjoying life. Our good buddy Mark with a C joining us here to talk Hello. about this one tonight. How you doing there, Marky? Just dandy. Spiffy Kins, thank you for having me on. I am looking forward to talking about Blue Beetle. I might surprise you with some of my views on this. But, uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm here I feel, for you, I feel man. Like, I, I feel like I might be on an island here by myself, unless our good buddy Mexican Iron Man uh, happens to take my side here tonight. How you doing there, Mex? Uh, I just got out of the movie theater. I literally uh, got out at 9.35 and drove here and fired up the computer, and uh, I am fresh out of the theater. It's fresh in your mind? Yeah, and I've, I've managed to avoid everything about this movie, every review, spoiler, not. I didn't even watch Midnight's Edge, Midnight's Edge After Dark last night. I didn't watch Midnight's Edge today. <laughs> so I didn't, you know, usually when, I, when movies come out, because I actually go to the movies, I don't just talk about them and not go. Yeah, like Rick. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about Rick, but I'm just. Saying, I go to. I, what are you, I go to the movies. What are you talking about? I don't. I, I mean, I go to. I go to thirty to fifty movies a year easily, like easily yeah. in the theater. And I'm not talking like a renegade copy on my iPad. I'm talking like I actually go to the theater and yeah. watch watch movies. So uh, I. I uh, wow. Yeah, so I'm fresh. Let's go. I and you know what? My takes on this are su gonna surprise myself. So I don't know. Here we go. This might be the last time I'm ever invited to the show. We'll see. Dude, was that? Did you go Solamente? 
Of course I did. When I, whenever <laughs> I wanted, when I, like in this case, like I knew that I was going to review, so I didn't take a date. If I take a date, I'm going to be distracted because I'm going to have a date. So if I, you know, when uh, when uh, reviews hit me up to that we're going to do this Friday, I'm like, okay, I'm going to treat it like work. I'm going to go in. Okay. Yeah, I don't so know the last you, time. I'm going to pretend I'm a YouTuber. I'm going to pretend I'm a YouTuber and I'm going to go watch this thing. Okay. I don't know how you could be distracted by by a date at the movies. Do tell. Do tell, Mike. Do well, tell. Well, I, I know this. I know this. Um, I'm going to make sure I use as much Spanglish as possible because that's what this film was all about. Oh yeah. And yeah, sometimes well, it wasn't it, even spang or ish. Well, if you, want, if you if you want, um, yo puedo hacer todo en español. Sí, claro que sí, podemos hacer todo. Te podemos hacer esta entrevista y podemos hacer el análisis en español. And just like the movie, and just like the movie, there's no close captioning whatsoever. So we have no, no idea. No, no, se había, se había. There was. I, I yeah, there were times where it wasn't. Every now and then. Unless it, they had some, they had some screenings here in El Paso where it was um, Spanish with English subtitles. So you could have done that, Jacob. Down in the old Texas town. Yeah, of El Paso, I don't know if that works here in El Paso. Maybe, maybe, maybe more so in El Paso, but no, not the Night Paso. Nighttime would find me in Rosa's Cantina. Music would play and Felina would whirl. Come on, I'm from El Paso. I have to know the whole. That's, I have to know the song. That is that is one of the best songs ever ever yes. recorded. Yes. Are you gonna start singing the, the are you gonna start singing the stars are bright next too? Yeah, sure. And by the way, that is the ver a version um okay, I'm ready allowed... to review the movie. Yeah. <laughs> a, ver a version of uh, of El Paso is is uh used with permission as the UTEP fight song. Uh I, I might just have to throw this thing on because I'm feeling outnumbered now, so I might have to bring that the old uh uh, USA here, Sombrero. This is way too small for my head, but I got it for free, so I can't complain too much. So, why do I feel like you wear that at inappropriate times? Oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> I'm oh, sure yeah. he does too. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's an American cowboy hat. Is there an appropriate time to wear this? Like last time I saw <laughs> reviews, last time I saw that reviews was on a renegade video where he was on a pole at some club. Mm, yeah. yeah, I'm getting like those oh. types of vibes here, bro. Oh, what was that? What when Lizzo was doing uh, hustlers? Oh God. Why, why, do you, why do you keep bringing up that movie to me? I like to just have that in the back of my mind. Forget that I ever saw it. No, no. Come on. No, J-Lo should have won Best Actress too. or Supporting Actress. Uh, if if the, don't not get down that rabbit hole, because then we're going to start talking about Barbie. You got a cowboy hat I can grab, too. Oh, all right. Uh, we're live tonight on YouTube, Rumble, and on Twitter. So, uh, hey, joining hi, us uh, early for this show right now, Dorf, Starf Scorpio saying, Hopefully, we have a panelist who liked uh, Blue Beetle. Where's Paulie? Paulie said he couldn't make it uh, tonight. I think he was uh, running with something else right now. So, we tried to get him on, but we couldn't. But we got uh, two other lovely Mexican panelists to join us here. Yeah, today, I'm your so. backup. I'm, I'm like, yeah. like, when Paulie can't make it, I get the call. They're like, We want a real YouTuber that mm -hmm. like knows movies. Oh, wait, Paulie's not available. Uh, call my yeah, because I mean, Rick is only like half a Mexican, even though he's fully Mexican. So I mean, well, we need at least I'm, have like I'm, one and a I'm, half. I'm I'm all Mexican. What are you talking about? Rob, are you, Rob, Rob is not. Are you? Rob is only quarter. Y yes. Y okay. Maybe you know. I, it is true. I, I never. I don't like spicy food. So you know. I guess not. What? I know. No, are you? I what? I'm I'm ashamed to my people. Ridiculous. What? Uh, JEC saying hello uh, to people there. He says, I think that uh, Mike Iron Man's going to go on an anti beetle rage. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I feel like I might be on an island here for, by myself, but I will gladly wave the flag on, on an island by myself here tonight. C.S. Johnson is going in tonight. I think she already knows exactly how I feel. But like I said, we're going to just save that just for a later portion of the show. So before we start getting into the actual movie itself, there's a couple of topics uh, kind of leading into this that I want to talk about. And I guess well, the first part that I want to bring up is this whole thing thing with uh rachel ziegler because oh, I, 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 I feel like i'm constantly asking myself the question it's like is this the dumbest actress like ever <laughs> I, I think to myself like i really have to like go back and think like who's actually been dumber than, than than this chick first of all this is an actress here who up until what two years ago had literally never acted in anything whatsoever i believe this her story is that steven spielberg discovered her and that's kind of the reason why she has a career right now but her only film was in west side story the remake that absolutely bombed at the box office a couple years back then her second film ever was shazam 2 which is not off to a good start and then apparently her next two films is the hunger games 
Games prequel that's coming out uh, later this year. That that might buy him as well. And now the Snow White movie, which she probably has arguably single handedly killed by herself and, and nobody else. Uh, she's basically just admitted to everyone that she's starring in a movie that she personally hates because she has some kind of like weird PTSD uh, situation going on with this film here. And then she's been getting backlash for it. People have been calling her out for it. And now all of a sudden she appears to respond to the backlash by uh, retweeting a, a Lady Gaga fan account talking about hating men. So I'm pretty sure that's also going to uh, be great for the box office here. But I think this is uh, from John because John was the one that... Uh, uh, yeah, it's John Trent. So this is the one who uh, saw this tweet. But it was essentially just a, a, a tweet that she had reposted about a video about going on a rant about men because apparently men are the, the reason why she's getting a whole bunch of backlash all over social media right now. I think this was uh, it right here. <sighs> Yeah, so it, it's our fault that she's going around with every possible uh, interview that she can to sabotage this film, which keep in mind, isn't even finished yet. The movie's not even like done. They're still filming it. They're, 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 they're not even like post-production yet, but she's absolutely killed anyone's interest in ever seeing this movie. It, it hasn't even come out yet. Uh, Mark, I think I'm going to start here with you. Um is this the dumbest actress ever? And ha is there any possible way that Disney can salvage Snow White at this point in the game? Uh, I think not. Uh, this is the point that I was making a couple of nights ago, actually. I was just saying that, unfortunately, she's just indicative of what's going on with a lot of the younger audiences. And it's not because she's necessarily dumb, but she was grown in a lab to be the way she is. The lab called our public school system. You know, a lot of things that's going on out here uh, with our pop culture, they're conditioning the kids to feel this way. They have no sense of self-awareness whatsoever to see how they look to other people. Like, she probably thinks she's actually doing good things for this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And here yeah. she is. Basically, every time she opens her mouth, she's just off-putting. She's <laughs> annoying, insufferable, and she has no idea. But this is the generation of snowflakes. Everybody has a reason to be on some poor me and you're the bad guy type stuff. And um, it's, it's very disturbing. It's very disturbing to see because there are people who enable her, you know, who follow her, who co-sign with her nonsense. Oof. And um, I think she's just the tip of the iceberg, unfortunately. I don't think it's going to get any better until maybe we make a little bit more noise and just like show people the like idiocy of all of this. Like, look, here's a mirror. Look at what you look like. When she gets to be older, she's going to look back on this like a lot of that generation. And they're going to be like, whew, we I was annoying. Missed. Yeah, not only that, Mark, you and I share the same brain sometimes because I literally made a video from that perspective today. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the one I dropped, dude. I swear to goodness, it's, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes it's like we think the same way because uh, I, I came at it from the same perspective. I'm like, look, she was brought up in this. She is, she's not she's not had an original thought here. All of this was trained in her. Uh, in fact, I would say this entire generation has many people that are compromised by the idea that they've they, that, that they've basically been spoon fed their talking points and that continues to happen through the media every day or perhaps their publicist or their handler at Disney or whatever else. But in today's thing, I, I said specifically this, uh, Mark, and this is why you're a genius. I said specifically that that um they were brought up in a way that no matter what they were gonna be doomed because they have been emotionally manipulated from the time they were well introduced to the public school system but it goes beyond that the minute you watch any form of media or you 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 participate in radio or anything like that they've got you because they have been introducing politics which is the most uh, which is the most emotional, emotionally driven thing that we have into absolutely every aspect of your life. There have been studies done on this for 30 years now, and there's Pew Research to back up what it's done. It's created these silos, and that's when you start to hear that term political silos, where you have so many more people that are on the very far extremes of the ideologies of conservatism and liberalism, uh, and I call them the alt-left and the alt-right, Right. And, and those 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 perspectives are just they're growing. 
and they've been growing since the since 1994 if you look back that far in Pew research and you see that how that goes together but they've done stu- medical studies actually that uh, reinforce what Pew's researched which is that when you talk to uh, when, when you identify somebody who is politically active, when somebody self-identifies as politically active, they, look, they listen to political radio, they participate in political campaigns, things like that, they oftentimes are only reacting whenever they talk about anything political from the emotional center of their brain. That's the only thing engaged. They can actually see that in your mind when they give you political imagery, uh, when they give you um, commercials, what do you, what, you know, all, any of that, stump speeches, whatever it is. You're only reacting emotionally in your mind at that point. So when you engage on anything like that, you no longer, you've abandoned reason. And that's what happens. So if they can make everything political, they're cutting out the reasoning part of your brain. Yep. And that, wow. they talk about echo chambers. I mean, look, there's no bigger echo chamber in this country right now than Hollywood. There's a reason why they pick those people to work in that town and think that the way that they think. No one's ever chal- no one's going to challenge them politically in towns like Los Angeles and New York, and that's why it's set up that way. But uh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I've been on a tear on this chick on Twitter since day one, and uh, she is not a good example of my people in Hollywood, whatever my people might be. Uh, I'm real. Snow White's one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, it, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of Disney, as people probably know from my my Twitter life, but but I love I, I love Snow White. I mean, I really I really did. It, it has good memories of me, you know, back as a kid and. You know, I compare and contrast. There's some people that are making excuses for her. She's 22. She's this, this, that. You know what? She's just a train wreck, whether it's her parents' fault, it's Hollywood's fault, it's the media publicist's fault, it's Disney's fault, it's every Whatever it is, she's a train wreck. And I compare and contrast her to someone with some class and some self-awareness. Like, isn't Jen Ortega younger than she is? I think they might be like the same age. So. Well, Jen Ortega, to me, is a is a much better example of what I would – of, of uh, of an actress of my persuasion, if you will, uh, in Hollywood. And, uh, I mean, I just, you know, she, you know, she doesn't antagonize the fans per se, you know what I mean? And it's, there's a big difference between is someone woke and leftist or the right or not. Or not. you know, Hollywood people are designed to entertain us. That's their job. Their job is not to be, you know, be little men, be little women, you know, get political. That's not their job. Their job is to entertain. That's what they're paid to do. And frankly, guys, uh, there is something that Rachel did inspire me about. And if I'm going to do this whole show, I want to make sure that if I wear the sombrero, I'm paid for every minute I wear the sombrero on the show. Because, guys, <laughs> if I wear the sombrero for 18 hours, like a Disney dress, I think I should be compensated. I'm kidding. No, I mean. Nothing, no, man. Yeah, I'm out. I'm not wearing this all night either. <laughs> yeah, so. I think she, I, I just find her completely <laughs> insufferable and a huge embarrassment. And uh, it's not just one thing. It's multiple things, whether it's the Renner thing, whether it's the Gina Carano thing, whether it's the Snow White thing. This is just an insufferable, sick witch. And uh, and I'll be very happy and very pleased as her as her career fails. She uh, gets old. Her little star fades, and then uh, uh, and then she will either buy a dog or a cat, and she will uh, buy the dog or cat food, and she will end up alone. Well, she's always had a, a, a curious sense of uh, moral and intellectual superiority, right from when uh, she was promoting West Side Story. And there was an issue that West Side Story did not have subtitles, even though there was a lot of Spanish dialogue, which is fine for me. And I figure for Mike, because we do speak Spanish, to understand what is being said. But the, the person that I went to see West Side Story with, my uh, democratic socialist or communist friend now she admitted that she's a commie Uh, she doesn't well she doesn't speak a lot of spanish and rachel segler when she was asked about it she just said learn spanish baby it's like 2022 or 2021 or what have you and i said that's a terrible attitude i mean that's like if i were watching uh like a German language film or a film that had German dialogue, I'd appreciate the subtitles because I don't speak mm. German. And so she's always been this way, but her generation is like that. Her generation, which I'm assuming is Zoomers, uh, her, their generation is perfect. They've never done anything wrong. They, they, they are always right. They, they've never made a mistake. They've never done anything in their, in their past that requires uh, explanation or forgiveness. They're perfect. They're like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. So, of course, she's going to have this idea about herself and about Snow White, a movie that was made in 1937, and obviously so, 
it's so antiquated and it has terrible values because it's not about female empowerment. She's a, she's she's a, she's a, she's, a, she's um she's embarrassing herself and she's really bringing down the product. So no people. She's are, she's on a career trajectory that she she's going to be a train wreck and in record time, and she doesn't even have like a resume to fall back on to justify her being such a train wreck. Like if somebody doesn't reel her in like now, like she's going to be like one of the stories that we warn about in Hollywood ten years from now. Like it's like I said, I don't know who where they found uh, this chick. They just literally pulled her out of the ether and put her in a bunch of cameras in Hollywood, and that's like the absolute worst thing you could possibly do uh, to a person, someone who's not used to fame or success or anything like that. Just throw them in the deep end and expect them to know how to act when they clearly don't. It's like, yeah, you're this a recipe for disaster. This is why the studio system was probably the best. They tried to keep a lot of their stars from being so overtly political. They couldn't succeed. They didn't succeed all the time. People like Myrna Loy and John Wayne on the left and the right were very outspoken. But it wasn't part of their persona, and it wasn't something that they really dwelt on. So the studios did try their best. And they also um, gave their contract players small parts in films to see well, how the audience reacted. With someone like Rachel Zegler, Spielberg just made, cast her as the lead in a big budget film and I guess expected her to blow up and be this massive overnight success. It doesn't quite work that way, especially when your movie bombs and people would still prefer the, quote, problematic original. So mm -hmm. Rachel Zegler really is just making a spectacle out of herself and she needs to have someone tell her, you know, just stop talking and just go try to make small films and get small parts. Let the audience know who you are versus just coming across as smug and self-righteous and telling everyone how awful they are for liking a movie from 1937 and obviously so and threatening to cut uh her male co-stars Lee, I mean, her girl co-stars whole role from the film. That was just bizarre. So there's a lot of things that she says that are just sad and embarrassing. Please, uh, Miss Segler, you know, stop. Just stop. All right. That's well, a scary thing, together. man. You know, uh, Hollywood, all of Hollywood these days right now should be charged with corruption of minors, you know, because yeah. they're so they're so irresponsible in old Hollywood. Even when they got political, they were talking more to adults. They were talking more to grown-ups. Everything that's geared towards, uh, you know, in Hollywood today is geared towards the children and getting those young minds so sh they can shape them, you know, and warp them. And they don't have much respect. The The judgment is already on the grown-ups. Like, obviously, we don't know what we're talking about. We messed up the world, so we have nothing more to say. Now it's time for them to come in and fix everything that we messed up but these kids they don't have any wisdom they don't have any experience and even worse like i said before they have no sense of self-awareness so she's coming across like an idiot and you know self-righteous like so many of them are but they have to learn how to take uh i don't know guidance from those who went before them and of course those of us who went before them need to speak up a little bit more and stop saying well it's their world now clearly they don't know shit about what they're saying so sometimes you need that guiding hand, you know? And um, I think that's the challenge on all of us because this this chick is out of control. You said that Steven Spielberg uh, found her or whatever. And I think that's a lot of the problem. West Side Story is actually one of my favorite movies of all time, the original. Now she came in thinking that, okay, well, I'm Puerto Rican. So I think she's supposed to be Puerto Rican. And she's like, uh, Natalie Wood wasn't. So I'm going to fix this beloved classic but it's a beloved classic. You need to show respect in the same way that she's showing disrespect to Snow White, to the source material. The prince was a stalker. You know, all of this stuff that she's saying, nobody wants to hear that, man. Yeah. You know, you just can't take a dump on everything that went before you like it has no value. But that's this where we whole are idea of, hey, guys, it's 2023 and we set the rules of what's acceptable now. So anything that came out, you know, 100 years ago is bad now. So I'm pretty sure we have Colombian. But yeah, 
I'm pretty Which sure you guys have seen this whole social media thing about people who dug up the old uh, blackface uh, movies from Judy Garland from like a hundred yeah. years ago. Keep in <laughs> mind, this is this is a woman who's been dead since like 1969, and now the internet is just now digging up these <laughs> videos that have been around forever, talking about, oh my god, I can't believe this. Like she's a terrible person. And like she like what 16, 15 at the time these movies came out. Then not only that, she's like well known for having an absolutely horrific like upbringing and, and career in Hollywood. That's why she died so young to begin with. But, you know, hey, she wore blackface once, and now we need to trash her 50 well, years after the fact. I think she's worn blackface twice. Yeah, I said twice. <laughs> Point being, look, um, uh, I, I love Judy Garland. She legend. She Her voice is one of the best of the 20th century. People need to understand so much about her. I mean, her, her yeah, her childhood was really bad. Louis B. Mayer was brutal to her, insulted. I mean, called her my little heifer to her face. And Judy Garland also grew up at a time where vaudeville, she grew up with vaudeville, so sad to say that was acceptable. Um, it shouldn't have been, but it was. So there's a lot of context. But of course, the millennials and Zoomers, they're perfect. They've never done anything wrong. So of course, everything that, that happened in the past, they uh, they condemn. But Really, from my perspective, it's um, it's still part of the American Cultural Revolution. They've um, they they need a new target. They've already gone after the Confederate statues, and we were told it's just Confederate statues. But then they went after Washington and Jefferson because their whole um, you know their whole record is nothing but slavery. They did nothing else but own slaves, and then they went after. Uh, name you know renaming villages and renaming streets so they needed another target and so they found a, a dead woman who was very much progressive who was very much liberal uh, in her time and they decide to go after her you know wait mm -hmm. i i can't wait until these kids find out bing crosby wore blackface myrna loy she also was in yellow face early in her career so yeah let, let's go after myrna loy who's been you know who's been dead well, at least probably since the, what, the 80s, but who was uh, so was probably the most liberal person in Hollywood during the golden age, who was uh, short, uh, not exact. She was never a communist uh, and she was but she was uh, very, very much on the left. So let's go after let's go after her. And even she admitted later on that uh, doing the yellow face was a mistake. But come on. Unless unless you're going to have a seance, uh, stop on Judy Garland. It was not something that she controlled doing the blackface well listen these these are the same people who are mutilating themselves all right so it's like it's not just enough that you're going after celebrities who have been long dead because of something you disagreed with they disagree with the very fact of their being a lot of them they don't they don't yeah. know how to identify themselves in the singular it's they them like it's totally nuts man you know what's going on here and um People who know better really need to start calling this out and saying, listen, there's something emotionally going on. There's something mentally wrong. You know, oh, you're a bigot. No, there's something wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can't be afraid to take that stand because what's going to happen on the other side of this if we don't get a hold on this? You know, but, but, you don't but think even you even a stance like is. that, you have to have the ability to have empathy for others to even consider that uh, as something that would even go through your mind when you're just completely in your world that only what you think matters. You don't even like run through that mind that okay, there's clearly something wrong with this person, or this person is heading down a very very bad path if they don't make a change uh, somewhere in the near future. I mean, we're we're at the the point of society where we watch people get killed on social media and then we just laugh about it with like emojis and stuff like that. So I mean, that's also a uh, downfall of that aspect as well. Yeah. And the worst part about it is they're making an uh, industry out of it. You know, so if you can make an industry out of people's delusion and sickness, it's never going to get any better because now you have all of these, uh, you know, financial interests that's invested in this. Yep. They'll encourage it, which is what we see now with Hollywood. You know, all of this uh, messaging, all of the books that they're putting into libraries for kids. This is what they want. Oh yeah, so, they, uh, they they want it so badly, Mark. And this, and I hate to interject, but you you know this for a fact. You're a parent, right? They want this so badly, especially at that level, that that not only they're putting books and stuff like that in there, but but it, it's a cottage industry for psychology and psychiatrists to treat these people. Those are forever patients. 
You have a mm-hmm. you have a pharmaceutical industry that's going to benefit from the crazy in these people because they can't they can't deal with day to day life. That's I what, mean, yep. yeah. No, yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt on. you. I just I was like, this is big. It's big. No, that's spot on. That that's exactly what the problem is. So that's why I say, looking at her, it's. I wish it were just as simple as what the hell's wrong with this heifer. You know what I mean? But she's an indication. She's a symptom of a of a greater disease that's going on out here. And if you pay attention, you see a million Zeglers walking around out here now, you know, oh, yeah. if you talk to them, if you can bear it, if you can stomach it, a lot of them are just walking around this way. And, you know, that's where we are, man. At what point is professional victim going to be an occupation? Isn't that already? Isn't that already? <laughs> I mean, it's there's crazy. already people who are basically profiteering off the fact that, oh, my ancestors are slaves and we need respirations and they're multimillionaires. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I do ask the question when uh, the issue of reparations comes up. Uh, how much should my uh, Mexican immigrant and who lives mostly off social security send to Oprah Winfrey for reparations? Everything. <laughs> no, the real issue, Rick, is I woke up this morning and I had to tell myself, okay, the indigenous side of me demanded from the Spaniard side of me reparations. And that morning, this took the form of like jalapeno omelet. So, you know, my Spanish side had to feed my indigenous side. You, you got to fix yourself right where you're at. Don't worry about anybody else, Rick. You, you got the conflict is inside you right there. Well, well not I mean not really for me. I'm the like the waspiest Mexican in the world. So Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're, you're... <laughs> and with that, we're gonna go ahead and kick off our discussion wow. here about the next blue <laughs> movie, Blue Beetle. So before we uh go any further here, let me get a gauge of uh just the general reaction of this film. Raise your hand if you actually like this movie. Okay, then. So that's one, two, and three. So, Culture, how you doing tonight, my friend? Hey. <laughs> what, the, what the hell? What? That's racist. That's it racist. was. <laughs> oh, it was fun. That was hilarious. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So, yeah, um, so this is the latest. I don't even know how many, like, DC films we had up to this point. I know with, like, Marvel, it's been, like, 33, but I haven't even bothered to count all the Warner Brothers ones up to this point. But this is the one that I still don't understand why they thought this was a good idea unless they really, really thought that they had, like, the Latino Black Panther in their hands with this character who is largely unknown with the overwhelming majority of mainstream audiences, even within, like, comic book audiences, not exactly that popular within that subsec here but they figured that no hey we got a hispanic actor we got the kid from um what was it cobra kai so yep. maybe we can get some of that crossover audience we got uh the director here who's literally never written or directed a film in his entire life and you we can have tell Oh, sorry. And we have the writer of this film who, who literally his only uh, actual movie credit before this was a film back in 2019. I'm not even sure if you guys remember. It was called Miss Bala with uh, Gina uh, Rodriguez. It was a movie that literally came out in like j- January and then like no one watched it. And that's his only writing credit. And then these are the people who they put together to write and uh, direct this film. So looking for who who is in charge here it's not surprising to me that this ended up being a a big ball of crap but apparently some of you guys think otherwise so i'll go ahead and, and I'll start with uh you mr uh rick uh why what was your uh general feelings of the film before we get into the more specific details of the movie i thought it was uh pleasant enough i thought it hit the its familiar beats and yes you could go after it for being familiar but uh, I think it, I, I think it was probably one of the better uh, comic book films I've seen this year. But then again, we've seen Shazam two, Quantum Mania, uh, and The Flash. Okay, so that's I mean, if you talk compared to all those, yeah, Blue Beetle is going to be great, and I get, it did help that the Hispanic uh, characters there who are. I'm assuming mostly Mexican. Nana is uh, questionable. She might be Cuban. Uh, But for me, it's like, yeah, a lot of these people talk the way that my family did. The father reminded me a lot of my uh, uncle. So it's like I I could understand a lot of what was going on. I mean, I had some quibbles with some things, but I was entertained. It worked well. 
it was not, yeah, I'll say it's not original, but by, by this point, not a lot of uh, comic book films are uh, original. So I appreciated the fact that they tried their best. And so I, I, I'm, in this case, I'm easy to please, but I didn't hate it. I, I just did not hate it. I enjoyed it. It was a romp. For me, it was a romp. Okay, so you're a mark. Uh, Mike, why don't you try to wow. explain to me in better terms <laughs> <laughs> why uh, why do you actually, uh, I guess, like this film? Why, what, what uh, now, look, I'm going to say this. This film has some real fundamental problems. The director, mediocre. The writing, barely, me barely acceptable to mediocre. There's a lot of things wrong with this thing. There's a lot of things wrong with this thing. So, for example, there's some... There's a, there's going to be some tropes and some one-liners that are definitely like you're like you're like oh god slap myself in the head. Unbelievably, the George Lopez fascist line didn't bother me in the context of when it popped up. Mm -hmm. But there's some other ridiculous crap that came up, like when he goes into the corporate thing for the interview in a suit. Um, uh, there oh, was, the, the, there's uh, a lot of things that that irritated me. Of, we'll like, get to randomly that. stupid ass crap. The imperialist line is stupid. There's the the line where he says. Oh, we got to do you have your papers, which, uh, you know, we, you yeah. know, are you gonna, which is ridiculous because as Rick knows, the southern border is open and no one's scared about papers in years, years. So it's like, you know, what, 2020? No one's scared about papers, you know, something like that, give or take. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of like dumb, old, here's another thing that's really dumb. It, it is clearly a Mexican-American superhero movie. Why it's in Miami, I have no fucking idea. Because that, oh, that was I, the, I know, the big I know thing why. with me. That, that is completely stupid because the house yeah. you live in and the neighborhood, neighborhood they're in looks like parts of L.A. In fact, with the accents and with their cultural style, and they, this movie needed to be set in Arizona or L.A. No, or, or even Texas. Been, it, would be no, no, no. Uh, this is the thing. In the comic book, it's set in El Paso. And well, it, then it, it should have been in El Paso. It should have been El Paso. It's been explained that this is the nation that we got. Mm. So there's a uh, lot of random shit that's just absolutely asinine and stupid. Like yeah. it's all over the place. There's sprinkles of stupid all over this movie. Sprinkles. But then again, we're, we're watching a movie called Ruby. Now let me flip it and tell you. Now I'm going to tell you guys this. I'm as shocked as anybody that I, I like this movie more than I did it. I am as shocked with anybody because Lord knows I was on this show and reviewed The Flash with you guys. And I oh, was yeah. super looking forward to that. I was because I'm a I'm a recovering Snyder fanboy. I'm a Justice League apologist. I'm a I'm a recovering Snyder fanboy Twitter mobaholic. You know, all the nasty things that all that you guys hate Snyder bros for doing. I'm one of those. You know, Mexicans in Miami. I lived there for more than a decade, Darcipio. Shut up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> let, me you, let me tell you something about I lived. In, I literally lived in Miami for more than a decade. Literally, okay? Yeah. Let me tell you the reason I left. The reason I left is I basically got ran out of town by the Cubans and the Puerto Ricans because I couldn't grow my business there. Yeah, okay? well, if you're talking about Miami, you're talking about Cubans, the Puerto Cubans, Ricans that Puerto moved from New York. Puerto Rico, Colombiano, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, Venezuela. Let me tell you this much. Most Cubans and Puerto Ricans can't fucking stand Mexicans, okay? Maybe <laughs> California is different yeah. and it's been, but in, that, but in Miami, yeah. you know, son primo de Fidel, está ayudando, está haciendo de negocio con Fidel. You know, we're all because Mexico does business with Cuba, we're all evil. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Let me go back. I like this movie more than not because this is a, I am not a YouTuber. You guys zip it right down. Anyway, so I'm a recovering Snyder Holics, right? So, and I'm a, I've been in DC pain for more, for literally a, over a decade or two. There's been a few moments of greatness, okay. mostly it's been misery. I, now, why did I like this more than I than than I than, than not? Well, I found I found Cholo incredibly charming as an actor. Number two, I love the whole focus on family. Number three, I love that the parental. I, I like seeing the strong grandma. I like seeing the strong dad. I like seeing the father son stuff. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a father of a ten year old. Um, I love the uh, I, uh, I love the fact that that uh, that there was romance. With a chick that didn't look like a dude, or didn't look like she w once was a dude. <laughs> That's how low our bar is now. Dude, like... that there was romance <laughs> with a chick that looked like a chick and was smoking hot, and didn't look like she didn't always was a chick, or maybe or not, or there was no pronoun talk. Dude, you know, man. they they actually kissed in a movie. When's the last time we've seen that? There was actually romance in a superhero movie. 
you know, some sex appeal. And, you know, there were some places mm-hmm. where she posed and looked a little. I'm like, is she wearing a bra in that scene? But, but, but this is the thing. This, our bar is so low. We're giving the film a credit just because they had one attractive actress in the entire movie. Hey, I'm a DC <laughs> fan. My bar is pretty low. But yeah. Yeah, and let me tell you how this movie. This is a, if you are Mexican-American and been around Mexican-Americans and the culture of, like, Latinos, you're probably going to like this movie. And I'm going to say this. I got a lot of friends that aren't Latino that have been around me, my family, my community. I think there's a whole bunch of white dudes or black dudes or others that have had exposure that that are going to, like, get this. Oh, yeah, like, when I went over to Mikey's house, that's how his family behaved. Because here's the thing. One of the things that I know, Coach, I, one of the things that I heard someone complain about um, um, uh, okay. I, I happened to click on a YouTube thing and they're like, oh, the family thing took me out. The thing about Latino families, we do all this shit together. And I, I'm pretty sure that if I actually got a super blue bleed old or Iron Man suit, I probably would be doing stuff with my... I, I, I will say this. I, I agree that the portrayal of the actual family is accurate. I'm just saying it doesn't make for a great superhero movie when you're walking into a Blue Beetle film. So Look, uh, hey, look, and I, I'm Mexican Iron Man. I was ready to hate on all of the robot suit, robot suit tech fighting because... Yeah, because you know, they stole Iron Man from... from right, and so I was, ready to, I was ready to hate on the blue versus the red. Plus, you got to remember, you guys, my Wakanda, I have to go through Wakanda and Avatar well, where, where my indigenous people are never brown. They're always blue. So I had that psychological trauma to get over yeah, that. Yeah, dude, yeah, this was blue Conda forever, baby. I'm going <laughs> to say, I, I'm gonna say that. Look, did I love it? No. Did I like it more than Flash? Absolutely. Did it? Oh, I yeah. liked it. I mean, what am I going to say? That's like, hey, hey, I like I'm it. in shock that I liked that. I found a lot of charming stuff about this, and I really liked it. I don't know what I like this you. slightly decaying dead monkey better than the one that's more recently dead. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. And here's another well, thing. I hate George Lopez. And somehow that mofo, I hate George Lopez. I've never thought he's funny. I, you know, I just, you know, I he don't was know. He's terrible. I, in I this never like, I never, I think it's a, I never liked the fact the whole thing with the kidney and the wife and the cheating and all that. Even he, even I found him kind of charming. I, I got to tell you. So I look, I'm as shocked as anybody. Look, I uh, thought I was going to come you, out of this thing and rant. I don't know. You, shoot me. I'm going to get I'm, rant. You, you, you get rant me. in a good you, way. You went after me, bro. I'm gonna say this. I grew up around more Mexican families than you could possibly fucking imagine. So <laughs> right. You don't think I know that 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 life, and I, you don't think I've been breaking bread with my friends in their house with their entire fucking family. Uh, I, I grew up in San Diego, California. I'm basically Mexican at this point. No, Mark. I'm gonna go no. ahead and let you go before I just yeah. drop the hammer on this whole conversation. <laughs> no, you won't be dropping the hammer on this, man. Because listen, we we have like so much worse to be complaining about than this movie like when it comes to movies i mean we've seen and endured so much worse than what we got with blue beetle true blue beetle was charming all right it was um it didn't attack anybody it didn't go after any one specific group or anything like that the mere fact that they had experiences unique to them as a mexican family is not a threat to other people you know, if they can acknowledge the fact that there is, um, you know, a gentrification going on, they can acknowledge the concept of white flight without people saying, oh, my God, white man bad. No, it's just their particular experience in this world, in this country. You know, uh, for example, I married into a South American Brazilian family and I recognize a lot of uh, similar, you know, uh, themes you know, in that family, the way they stick together, the way they pray for one another, you know, things like that for me were refreshing to see on the screen. Zolo, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the kid's name right from Cobra Kai. Um, I think that kid's got it. I think he's got a relatability. He's got a charm. And I don't know if you noticed it, but by the end, when he's about to put the moves on on the girl, he got a little fire in him there, man. Yeah, he did. It's like this this kid, you know, he was like, give it to me. You know what I mean? He was he was actually getting a boner. You know what I'm saying? This is not something that you see Which in your average run of, of by the way. Yeah. What was that? Which they yeah. made fun of, by the way. They didn't quite make yeah. fun of it, but well, they did it's... draw they drew attention to it, but in a in a in a humorous <laughs> way. It wasn't like but, I mean, you. listen, if you're if you're a young man, you're putting the moves on a woman. We've all been there before. Uh-oh, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like I was seeing a lot of um I was seeing a lot of honesty in it. I went to go see it with my 14-year-old son. He was loving it. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, first of all, he's a big fan of Cobra Kai. So, you know, he didn't know that 
uh, that Miguel was going to be in it, you know. So when he saw him on the screen, he was like, "It's Miguel." I'm like, "Yeah, he's he, and, you know, star in the movie." <laughs> yeah, well, he wasn't putting two and two together. He doesn't follow this stuff like this. See, this is what I'm saying. We are so hard on these things now because this is our thing. You know what I mean? But you got to challenge yourself to see this from the perspective of general audiences and stuff. I don't think this movie is going to suffer the way you think it is. I think it's going to actually get good word of mouth because it's not heavy handed in what it's trying to do. You know, I found it to be um, not the best. Uh, there are certain things in this movie, of course, we've seen it before, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it was entertaining. It was a pleasant enough ride, man. You know what I mean? Like the flash freaking drove me crazy. All right, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I, I have no words for how badly that movie pissed me off. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm going to be outraged by Blue Beetle. Like, first of all, he, he doesn't have the cultural impact to elicit that type of reaction. You know, so when I see people all over social media talking about ah, Blue Beetle, what? what the fuck? You didn't know Blue Beetle like two years ago. You know what I mean? Why? It's like, accept the movie for what it is. Either you liked it or you didn't. And that's okay. You know, but for my part, it was a nice little time waster. Mm. You know, didn't have didn't have to shatter, didn't have to change the game. It did what it set out to do. Culture, I'm gonna let you go in. What what did you? What was your general thoughts about this film? <clears throat> All right, I didn't hate the movie. That's was it in focus? But, but <laughs> it didn't focus. focus. The sound was great. They made great musical selections for certain action scenes. Cypress Hill's fucking awesome. Um, anyway, yeah, 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 that was yeah. perfect. Okay, look, there's a lot of good to the film. There's a sh shit crap ton load of fucking bad. And the fact that they can hide all the messaging behind the family message that you guys all consumed, I get it, right? And I'm 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 not backlashing on you at all. But I just uh, but because honestly, I didn't hate the movie. To be fair, I gave it. If you watch the, the video I do for tomorrow, I gave it a six out of ten. Right? It's not. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's just. It, it's not the worst thing I've seen this year. And let me tell you, there's like a competition for that shit right now. But uh, look, the family is hiding the message, and there's so much of that trope in there. It's ridiculous. And the fact that you didn't see how they like hit on white people throughout the film kind of bothers me because it happened multiple times, and I don't care about that. There's always messaging there. But but and again, I I'm, I'm not sensitive to that because guess what? I'm freaking Heinz fifty seven. I'm made up of like a whole bunch of shit, so I don't care. What I do care about is the fact that that um, there were moments in this that it it almost felt degrading to 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 Hispanic and Latino people, however you want to you know d delineate it, because it was it, it was so trope ridden and there were so many stereotypes in there that it 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 kind of was uncomfortable. And again, I, maybe I'm reacting because I, I you know, I, I appear to be white. I don't know, but I, I, I know, I know that I know that I was not super happy about it. I felt like um, the Rudy character played by George Lopez was terrible. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the Batman line didn't bother me quite as much as it could have because of the context it was in. I understand what Mike was saying there, uh, but the fact that he's just, you know, he's constantly calling it out. Um, and he's aligning problems to one particular group of people. Uh, and, and unfortunately, he learned at the very end about Jenny. I think that's her name. The problem is, is I wouldn't have remembered any of their names, any of the people's names in this, other than Blue Beetle and Jaime, mm -hmm. it, 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 until you guys brought them up. It, because, because that's how poorly developed these characters were. And they appeared to have sudden traits that make no sense. I couldn't pick out where in the country this was coming from, having lived across the country and in various different cultures and areas. Um, you know, uh, you guys, I, I, I thought it was Puerto Rico, I, to be fair, right? I'm, I mean, that's where I, my takeaway was. It's a fucking island, right? Where, where else would it be? It's not New York City, Calvera, Palmera, whatever the fuck the place was called. Yeah, you know? Palmera City. Yeah, yeah. So I, it, my, my, I mean, it's, it's a Panama City. I've been there. That's that's Florida, you know, or, or you could go to Panama City in, in South America if you've ever been there, you know, in actual Panama. I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of things. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I feel you. But again, I, there's a lot of good things here. And it certainly was the worst film I've ever seen. But, I, you know, the story was was it was light on story. Mike was right. Mike is right. There's, no, there's, there's a problem with the story. 
there, there was one thing there wasn't a problem with, and I want to call this out because this is a hundred percent the truth. There's no problem with the acting. Everybody in here was amazing. They delivered on everything they were asked to do, and you yeah. believed in the character, but they didn't have any development. We don't know, nor is it explained why Grandma, the revolutionary, all of a sudden shows up in the third act. We don't know or understand how, you know, a lot of these things are happening. And again, if you haven't asked me from the very beginning to dismiss all the plot holes that started in the very first act of the film, then maybe I would give you that little bit of disbelief. But let's start with the first thing that bothered me. And then I, I mean, I could go into six or eight more easily. But the first thing that bothered me was at the very beginning of the film, she picks the dude's key card to get into the room to get the scarab beetle, right? Did you ever see her return that? No. The only thing you saw happen is her exit that room with the badge and the coat still intact with carrying the burger box, which held the scarab. Did, 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 how did he end up with the badge? How did he badge back into the room when he didn't have his badge anymore? Well, okay. the, why and does I, she even I, need a badge to begin with? I mean, isn't she like the, the owner of the she company? Is, she is, but I mean, I, look, this is just the beginning, and she doesn't want a badge in as, as herself because it was exposed mm -hmm. her as the thief. So that, that, to, that, that didn't bother me as much. But there are so many more of these things that make zero sense mm -hmm. because nobody thought through the, the continuity of this film. And it doesn't stop there. And, and again, I praise to the fact that the CGI was wonderful, and it, yeah, only, it, it, and it and it only hid the CGI at the end because because of the nonsensical fight in the middle of the air for no reason in in a black sky um, that was again you know there was a lot of things lost in that fight scene that close up fight scene because they're essentially hugging each other as they fly up into the air. There's there's so many different things along the way that lost me. You know, the, the the I like the fact that they reached back into the past, the previous comic, and and pulled cord forward. That's fantastic. But at the same time, you know, they, they there wasn't enough uh, exposition. It uh, wasn't enough to to uh, to understand that the daughter already knew that this tech existed. You know, and mm -hmm. it's been sitting away, you know, hidden away for however long since she was eight years old. You know, for her finally to return to it, despite the fact that she's already well aware of the problems that are going on within her dad's company and her granddad's company, you know, I mean, you, you, you can't let these story elements just dangle. It doesn't make any sense. I, again, I can go on and on and it, it's unfair for me to do so, but there's, there's, there's holes in the plot. There's holes throughout the story. There's incomplete character development that would have been resolved in other things. Too many people were involved in the culmination of things. It's like they, they went out to make a superhero origin story and they tried to make an Avengers out of normal people. And I'm great with that. The, the, I understand the cultural aspect of that, 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 that the family supports each other. They go to war. They'll literally fight for each other. I get that because I've seen it, witnessed it in real life. But to be fair, you, I, that you, you punch the, absurd, the absurdity button at some point. And, and well, because you've asked me to accept so much getting there, you know, I, that's, yeah. that's, that's the thing that lost me. And yet I still like the movie. I didn't hate the movie. It's not a good movie. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll be the bad guy here because uh, I hated the movie. And wow. I have a list of things of why I hated the movie. I wrote them down while I was in the theater. So um, I hated this movie for a oh. multitude of reasons. It isn't just one particular reason why I hated this film. There were several uh, reasons here. First of all, let's start off with the family here. And now, yes, I get it that, you know, Mexicans are very pro-family. They have big families. And I'm pretty sure that the family in this film reminds you of your family or any connection that you had to a family in the past. I get that. Here's the thing. This is a movie called Blue Beetle. Which means that in the character movie, which, like I said, another character that people aren't very familiar of, they're going to want to see Blue Beetle to kind of adapt to him, figure out why he has his own solo movie. Because they're thinking, oh, if this guy has his own movie, he must be special. Let me go see what it is. Uh, this movie, as you can see on my title here, uh, Blue Beetle and the Funky Bunch, is because every single time that this character has an opportunity to establish himself to the audience as a super cool superhero, he basically gets cock blocked by his own family every single turn in the way, whether it's his extremely grating sister, whether it's the annoying grandma bit, whether it's George Lopez screaming and yelling uh, throughout the course of the film. I just found out that every single time that this is where Blue Beetle had a chance to establish himself as 
as the hero that he's supposed to be throughout this story. All of a sudden, a random family member comes out of the day and shoots a one-liner while shooting things into the screen, or he always has to get saved by some obscure member of his family. It's like, okay, that's great if this is like an Avengers team up, but the movie's not called Blue Beetle and his family. The movie's called Blue Beetle, and I just felt like they took too much away from the character throughout the course of the movie, and I didn't like that at all. Secondly, uh, the setting of this film. We've talked about it throughout the course of this night. Uh, we didn't know where this one was set. Uh, apparently, this is a, uh, supposed to be a town that's set in Texas. However, the way that it shot uh, the cinematography, it looked like Miami. But the most of us, you would have no idea of watching this film that this is a film that's set in Texas. You think that this is a film set in Florida when it's not, right? And then some of the inside uh, interior shots looks like Los Angeles. So it's like this film had no idea like where it was supposed to be like portrayed at all. I think like, there was some parts where it looked like Puerto Rico, some points where it looked like, like I said, Los Angeles, Miami. It was just very, very confusing just on the offset, especially if you're watching this on a DC film. You can think to yourself, is this like a fictional city or it's like, what, what is even like going on here? That's a whole nother uh, topic by itself. The messaging. Now, I've been uh, reviewing movies for a long time, so I've caught up. I've made it very, very easy to catch uh, certain subliminal messaging in films throughout the course of uh, uh, watching my movies, and there was a lot of it here, especially in the first, I think, 60 minutes of, of the movie. Like, there was a lot. You had the whole thing about, like I said, the whole racial justice aspect of the, of the whole thing. Like I said, you're dealing with, you know, so the kid, if you guys don't know, is it Yami or Jamie? I don't know how you want to pronounce I mean, it, but I mean, yeah. I so mean. You, Hi, man. It's like hey Zeus, whatever. But, <laughs> but but so his kid. The whole idea is that this kid just came back from college. Apparently, he didn't get uh, a degree in anything that actually mattered because he's immediately like working as a janitor for the most part. So he spent all that money in going to college and did absolutely nothing with it. He comes back home. He finds out that everything has changed. Uh, his family is going broke. They're losing the house. The neighborhood's getting genderfied, and apparently despite being in this super populated Hispanic town in Texas, we're supposed to believe anytime a white person sees a Mexican, they just assume that they're a gardener. Like that's kind of like the same theme that we see over and like over again. So it's like, I noticed that uh, a lot throughout the course of this film. A few other things that I noticed that may have been subtle or not so subtle. He had a lot of anti-capitalist um, uh, messaging and, and, and uh, I guess you could say dialogue throughout the course of the film, which I picked up on. The whole concept of this film is essentially another idea of transhumanism where the big bad villain, which we'll talk about here in a second is, oh, they want to, uh, take this scare up and make uh, super soldiers that are uh, can, can be combined with technology. So it's the whole idea of we're going to combine machinery and humans and bind them together as one and then they're going to be unbeatable super soldiers that can live forever and blah 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 blah. Um, the extremely annoying Hispanic family. H here's the problem where I would have broken off with this. The first 10 minutes of the movie, I didn't mind it at all because like I say you're establishing the character and you're establishing the relationship of his family. I have no problem with that. The problem is that this is a two hour and seven minute movie and it never stopped it's like once you got past like the first 10 and 20 minutes where you can kind of like introduce the kid the guy's care uh, his family uh more of the character relationship he has with different members of his family once we've gotten out in like the first act of the movie now we can move on to shifting the focus more towards him rather than having him being like i said a superhero kicking family which to me just completely took away from your title character and i did not like that at all um <laughs> Let's talk about this whole thing. So I think about about two thirds into the movie, somewhere in the second act, you have a pretty much a scene where it's flat out an ice raid. Let's just call it like what it is, right? So uh, the evil corporation is trying to get uh, the scarab back, and they figure, okay, well, let's go attack his family here. And what you get here is a very over the top, dramatic sized ice raid where you have uh, a SWAT team with guns pointing him at this Mexican family, and they're literally pulling him out like they would be pulling out like an illegal immigrant uh, from, from their homes. And that's kind of like the over dramatized imagery that they're showing in this film and it's like it was like okay look i get it you're, you're hammering at me over the head maybe it was a little bit more subtle for you guys but like i said considering the fact that this is a writer and a director who don't have that much experience and are not very good at being subtle i'm just going to take it at their word that they weren't being as subtle as they thought they were throughout the course of this film and that was like one of the scenes where it felt like the movie just came to a screeching halt because now it's like okay look i get it maybe if you did this like four uh years ago when trump was still president you can go off this talking point but this whole scene like this whole thing is completely late for the time that you're trying to put this movie out 
out here. Didn't really care for that much at all. And then I guess we could talk about the villain here for a second because we're going to talk about the ending when we roll back around to it. But Susan Sarandon is in this film as a de facto villain just because, like I said, she's basically what she said she was in the uh, promotion of this film, the military industrial complex. And she's basically playing her best Hillary Clinton impersonation throughout the entire film. Because every time I saw her, I just thought Hillary Clinton throughout the entire Same movie. Here. And it was like she's just kind of like bad for the sake of being bad like she's not even that good of a villain like she she's bad because of what she represents not because of anything that she actually does she's just basically generic uh corporation is bad because they want to uh weaponize you know uh technology type thing that we've seen in so many other movies beforehand it's like nothing about this movie felt original to me and it felt like to me from a creative standpoint they were banking their entire um film here on the idea that hey we got an hispanic actor we got an hispanic director an hispanic writer and it's going to be a whole lot of latino representation here this is going to be essentially all we need to make this film a hit because once we put this out here all the hispanics all the latinos are going to run us out and go watch this movie and i don't know if you guys looked at the box office uh so far this week Weekend, but I don't think that they hit that mark. I think they were going for kind of an expand, uh, Hispanic Black Panther phenomenon with this film, and I don't think they got it at all uh, here. So those are just a few things that I've noticed throughout the course of the middle of the day. Very, very uh, unenjoyable for me, but there's definitely some more deeper details we can get through on the course of that thing. So let me go ahead and flip this over to you guys. Do you guys feel like that I was out of line with anything that I brought up uh, here yes. so far as far as the complaints? Uh, we'll yes. start with you, Rick. Yes. The whole thing about this being uh, some sort of de facto ice raid, mm -hmm. uh, I would just argue with you, Jacob, that sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. I didn't see it as uh, as, a, as emblematic of an ice raid. I saw it for what it was presented to me as, the evil corporation deciding to storm this particular house because it, had, because it was the family of uh, Jaime, and... And that was his quote vulnerability, his uh, his family. Now I uh, I I agree. I think it was Mike who said, I was not thrilled with that whole uh, documents thing. You know, uh, where George Lopez said, "Oh no, if the, if the police come here, they're going to start checking our status, and Nana, you're going to be in trouble, and uh, the father's going to be in trouble." Listen, uh, that's a that's a terrible trope, and I don't like it. It, it bothers me a lot that in a lot of films and on television for some weird reason and it's always mexicans we're always here terrified about being uh, being arrested or deported uh, i can say that every single member of my family is perfectly legal not only that but as, as, as my mom rest in peace uh, did point out she was a real american because unlike me and my father uh, we two were just born here she actually took the citizenship test. Right. So it, it, that that did that I thought was unnecessary and I thought it was a little heavy handed, but I did not see it. And I don't know any person Hispanic or who has seen it and just thinks, oh, this is exactly like an ice raid. Oh, that, that that's you know, that's what it looks like. I think no. you're the one who is seeing this, Jacob. But I would just say a cigar is just a cigar. This is not what I saw. That would be one thing that that uh, I disagree with you very firmly on. I do kind of see your point with, uh, with the family. Uh, for a family that's supposed to be Mexican, I don't know why the Nana was talking about, you know, down with the imperialists. I'm going, is she Cuban? Because either that or she fought with Villa during the revolution. And I thought, boy, she's like way too old. She's like because the imperialist was a little less subtle than colonizers because that's already been yeah, taken yeah, by the Black Panther. Imperialist thing, yeah, that 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 was over. That was a little over the top, and I was confused. I actually put in my note: did 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 not did uh, Anna fight with Bia? <laughs> because I'm going, what is she talking about? If she's Mexican, what is she talking? She would be against maybe the the pre the the, the pre party, but I, I thought that was bizarre. That, that just seems strange. But Can I, I ask I, you a question. Yes. Do you think that your average kid who's watching this movie gives a shit about any of that stuff? You know, like with all due respect, I'm thinking to myself, like, like I said before, there has to be a challenge for us to get out of our heads. Like we're okay. We're talking about how we feel and what we think, and that's respectable, but I'm just saying there's a greater context here, you know, and everything that you're saying, you know, everyone, all of us, you know, especially me is valid. You know what I mean? 
So it's like, you know, great points, you know, all around. But we're talking about the overall appeal of this movie, right? And my thing is, I'm not sure if it was necessarily just made for just us. I mean, of course it was made for us, but it was made for everyone, you know? So I'm like, how important, like all of those things are true, but how important is it for your general audience? Like just some knucklehead teenagers on a Friday night going out to watch a movie. You know, are they are they like processing it this way or are they picking up on the more overt themes of a family that sticks together? You know, a kid that has his life rocked when something tragic happens, you know, and his attraction to this young lady to the point where he can get fighting mad, you know, and, and bond with this uh, with this uh, symbiote or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So it's like mm -hmm. I, I don't see it as the um, tragedy in filmmaking as some of us might be thinking here, because generally speaking, the PG, what, what is this? Like a PG rated movie? PG? PG-13, you know? yeah. Yeah, I think generally, I think most of the kids who are seeing this and their parents, who's bringing them and stuff like that, are just going to be like, it's just, a, it's just a harmless good time. Yeah, I, you know? I, I, I think it is. Uh, I think it is a, a harmless good time. Oh. And I can tell you uh, with uh, I guess because uh, I, I am Mexican-American and uh, Mike, I mean, is also Mexican. But I would say that the the Nala character, for example, yeah, her getting in very much into the TV novela, uh, that's uh, that's pretty accurate. I can tell you that I am perfectly aware never to call my uh, my aunt and uncle. When the when the TV novelas are playing, I always have to wait until the ten o'clock news or the weekend, because they will rush me off the phone if I bother to interrupt them <laughs> during the during the novela. So yeah, I mean I've never seen any of my relatives dance to the theme song, and I do know the novela, which is, uh, which uh, they did uh, mention twice. So yeah, for uh, for the people who uh, are from uh, Mexican American culture, I think, and even just in general. I think people are going to watch this and say, yeah, this was a, a good, it's nothing special uh, in that, or it's original. Yeah. You, you hit a familiar beats, you know, you, the, the kid is discovering his powers and, and then he has to have a, a villain to the fight. And he's going to have this kind of weird version of himself or, you know, a, a bigger monster. Yeah. But on the whole, I, I found it entertaining. I found it amusing. I did not hate this movie and I, I, I mean, we've seen. I think we've seen worse comic book films. I can't believe that people would actually point. think. Okay, Jacob, you really think the Flash is better? Yes. No. You, you want to know no, why? No. No. You want to know uh, why? Yeah. Why? On this point, Be I because uh, disagree with you. that movie did not annoy me as much as this movie. Now, I'm not no, going to say you and actually tell I, you with I, a straight no, face no, that no, the Flash I, I wonder, is good. I wonder, no. I wonder if you went into this <laughs> thinking that you were going to be annoyed. I never. I don't. I went into the Flash movie. thinking I was going to be annoyed. No, but... I never go into any movie thinking it's going to be annoyed. I can't believe that you actually think the Flash is better. The Flash is really the worst. Shazam is much worse than Blue Beetle. Blue Shazam, Beetle, no, you know where you, you, know where you messed up. The Flash is mediocre. The the Flash is absolutely like it's a no. nothing. It's it's a nothing of a film. No, Jacob, did you did you go into the Flash with a notebook to take notes? Yes. This I mean, is I do what that you with do. Every with... Movie, so yeah, I do that too. Yeah, to be you... fair. I do too. You're writing, you're yeah, writing while I've you're watching the movie. I've been for like seven years. That's what I do. <laughs> I gotta take, I gotta take notes for films Look, while I'm writing reviews. Interestingly enough, Mark, just just so you know, I go in with a notebook ninety nine yeah. percent of the time. You know the time I didn't go into with a notebook. Where? This movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really? Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look for the record. Like, I do like written reviews for other sites as well. I'm not just like doing like the video reviews as well. So I obviously have to take more notes because I have to put more details for the reviews itself. So yeah. that's just kind of the way that I do it. I know for typical moviegoers, you're not going to go in there with you, like a, a notepad and stuff. No, like but, that, but so. you you should see me writing in the dark, dude. It looks like chicken scratch. <laughs> it's just yeah, this, this, is, this is mine. This is mine. I know it can't come out clear. No, yeah, yeah it's a little. I, I have notes that I wrote when I yeah. got home. Right, you know what I mean. I guess it's a, it's a it's kind of a philosophy thing. You know what I mean. Like if I'm going yeah. to expect, I guess that's the reason why I have the view of this that I had. Like to me, the bottom line is always, was I entertained? You yeah. know what I mean. And I'm not going to be entertained. It's like going in to a freaking lap dance. You know what I mean. And you get in the lap dance, and you're like, 
Well, she moved to the right at this time. And you know what I mean? No, man. Enjoy that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like nothing is going to take you out of it more than writing a note, writing notes when you're in the middle. You know what I'm saying? You're banging your chicks back out. You're banging your chicks back out. No, no, no. I would disagree. I would disagree with you, Mark, respectfully, because we when I write notes, I want to remember certain things or certain lines that I might go back and mention. This is different like when I go to a concert and, and I just go to enjoy. I sometimes do go to the movie just to enjoy the movie and not even think uh -huh. about the review. But if I'm going to write a review, I want to put down my impressions then and there versus something that I might forget. So on but that the point one, is, I do, if you I forget do. it, if you forget it, was it that important? It and that's the been. point. It might have been. But, might but if it me. was, you would remember. That's no, I no that's, that's no what, Mark, no. There are Mark. times when I literally forget uh, like where my car is. So and my car is important <laughs> to me. So of course I'm going to. Do are you the guy who takes the picture of like the the, the parking right, zone? Just it, so you can no, not, 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 not that far. Not that I far. am because I get older. But let me let me let me interject here as well. <laughs> Mark, I the only time I write in the notebook is when I notice something that pulled me out of the movie. Because if you pull me out of the movie, that's mm -hmm. what that's noteworthy. Now I didn't take a notebook with me. You heard how very specific i was about the things that i did not enjoy about the film did i take notes right. no i didn't have to because I still you remember this right say again yeah. but because i went in there to enjoy it. something that, if, if you could talk to the person i went with mark you'd understand i went in there trying to enjoy this movie i wanted this to be good because i i really like that solo kid well and wait, wait are you gonna interrupt me yeah rick anyway um, <laughs> Mikey, I'm sorry, man. No, I went in there to enjoy this movie. I wanted it to be good. I don't think you realize how badly I wanted this to be good. You don't get it. I wanted this film to be like, like something I could root for because it is, it is, it is, it was, it would have been a wonderful reward for a community that over indexes at great films that never gets the respect that they deserve. And if you understand what I'm talking about, it's a conversation Paulie and I have been having for almost three years now. It's 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 the, the the Latinos are never given their due in cinema. They just this aren't. is the kind and of my wait, wait, big. What? I'm almost done. I promise. But they're never they're never given their due in cinema, and it's always bothered me because they they they're oftentimes portrayed as the bad guy, the comic relief, um, you know, the sidekick. Whatever it is, it's just it, it, they are not given the opportunity to lead major projects. Mm -hmm. And whether or not that's, you know, a, you know, a trope or not, this is the one time I thought that that wouldn't that wouldn't be the case because there were so many people that were, Latino you know, that were involved in it because because of all of those factors. I thought this was going to be genuinely an opportunity to shine. And I, I wanted it to be so much more than it was. And I appreciate the people that are in, you know, the Latino community that want it to be that. But I just this is this wasn't the way to do it. You know, it, it, well, it, how about this? Go ahead. I'm Go ahead. sorry. No. No, I was going to say, how about this? This is a this is a step. Yeah. In that direction. I agree with that. I agree with right. that. Now, I agree like that. I remember uh this this is similar to like I see Vulcan lives. He's saying they wanted a Hispanic Black Panther. I remember my critique of Black Panther when it came out was that it was an average at best superhero movie, um, to me, that was made into a cultural phenomenon. It was all right. Now, because it was made into a cultural phenomenon, you had to judge it on two different levels. You know, the actual movie, which was average to me, you know, as somebody who grew up reading comics, I didn't see the big deal. It was just about, you know, it was it was enjoyable, like most of the MCU at that time. Right. But was it this huge thing that should have been winning Oscars and shit? I, I thought not. But then on the other side, I could not ignore the little kids who were dancing on their desks and like celebrating and enjoying it, let them have their moment is what I said, I you know, in my video, it's like, why would you take that away from them by saying this is some bullshit, all of this stuff, obviously it means something to them. Right. So yeah. I'm like, okay, that's great. Let it be, let it be that, you know, and let it be like a, a, a an inspiration, which is why I went so hard when they decided to kill T'Challa, you know, because that was a disservice. You know, but and it's the same with this. If there are children, you know, of any persuasion, but definitely little Latino children, if they love to see, you know, uh, you know Jaime, uh, Jaime, Jaime uh, Reyes, Jaime. you know, then I think that it's only a good thing. 
You know what I mean? So it's like I'm kind of like that. Well, the let, movie, let of course, is not just, just to push back on that just a little bit because obviously the big talk for the last month has been this Barbie movie, right? And this Barbie movie mm-hmm. has had a lot of things directed towards like young girls and young teenage girls that wouldn't exactly be a good thing for our society if they adopted it, right? But would you push back on that same thought process if, like I said, the little girls that went there and watched it enjoyed it and they took away something from it? Just say, let them have their fun despite what the movie is pushing specifically towards them? Um, you know, Barbie, Barbie was, uh, devilish because they marketed it, you know, like it was something that you could share with your children when it wasn't, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. they took a toy and they put a bunch of, uh, like social things in there, uh, that was anti, you know, men, anti women, anti men and women, you know what I mean? And, and um, yeah. And the uh, messaging was confusing at best. I don't think this movie is like that. I don't think it. I, I started off by saying I don't think it was an overt attack on anything or anyone. You know, Barbie wasn't like that, you know. So, uh, you know, yeah, I I, I would have that uh, criticism for Barbie when I wouldn't have it for this, you know, and vice versa. You know, if you know what I mean, like it's two. it's almost apples and oranges to me. You know, Barbie was so. Uh, yeah. Hey, just for the record, just for culture can see, you, you realize that on this show, I have this button. Best Would you please shut the hell up? But I don't use it on you because I actually like you. To, to you annoy me, then I'll just press the button again. Cause I, I got a lot of I should know. I should know. Too much power. Yeah, that, that, that's the well. Rick uh, version. Oh, no. Uh, Orange, Orange gets that, too. And Johnson at times. Or when you all annoy me, I just press oh, the button. So yeah, that's it. So Fletch. So let me ask you guys this, because maybe I'm the only person who caught up on this as far as uh, things. The villain that's in this movie. Now that there's a moral problem with this villain, and then there's, there's a costume problem with this villain as well. Did anyone else think that this guy looked like uh, the thing from uh, Pacific Rim, like the the robots from Pacific Rim? Did anyone else catch up on that? Was I the only person who caught up on this? I, I, I feel I feel like he looked like an angry red sunflower, but that's just me. To be perfectly honest, uh, and I hope to review this movie for Somewhere Under the Stars, he looked like one of those robots from a movie called The Black Hole. Oh, I, I love you. I was thinking the same thing. Maximilian. Well, yeah, Move whatever it was. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, it lo- that's what it looked like to me. I, I think I even put down in my notes that it, it's like it looks like the robot from the black hole. I saw yeah. it once, mm-hmm. and I hope to see it again for, uh, for to review. Did, for by the way, movie. by the way, Disney did such a great job with that film. If they ever fucking go back to touch that during this particular era, I don't give I, them ideas because you know I, they'll do it. I will. There's still talk. There's talk of a remake. Talk out. A remake. Really? Not right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it has been. And, and let me tell you. Disney right now is so bad, so bad that they should not ever look back at anything they ever did ever again because they, they only destroy and, and, yeah. and, and they are willfully doing it. I mean, we have people that used to work for them that I know. In fact, I interacted with one of them today on Twitter. Very bad. Mike has been awfully quiet. I feel like I, 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 I feel like I was mean to him. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, I love you. Before I go go to Mike here, I just wanted to point this out. So the whole time I was watching this, I kept thinking to myself, this guy looks exactly like the thing from Pacific Rim. You want to know who else produced uh, Pacific Rim? Uh oh. Warner Brothers, the same people who produced oh. this movie. They literally took the design from a movie they did ten years ago and then copied it for the uh, for the basically the layout of this villain here. And it was mm-hmm. so deep in my mind. It's like there's no way this was done by a separate company. It turns out both movies are produced by the same produced, uh, production company. Well, so to be fair, go. I saw Pacific Rim once and it left no impression on me. So well, this, I, this... I'm I, yeah. So I didn't think that. I thought well, the black hole. That's what I thought. Well, but what's interesting is you, this won't leave any impression on you either. You're going to forget about it in two weeks. I, I, I do want to point out something else that bothered me, and I want to ask if any of you noticed it. Um, Jaime decided that the, his family doesn't kill. Did you see all the killing done by his family? Yeah. Did you not see his sister uh, celebrating the killing that was going on during the movie? Uh, too? They did, crushed the guy kill. At, at one yeah. point. And then they were all like, oh, yeah, 10 points. Like, this is GTA. Well, like a I, game that I, has a power. I, 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 I might have missed that. I want to. I want to hear this apology. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Say it again. <laughs> For who now? Well, my, Rick already said he missed it. I just want to know: Am I culture? Am I allowed to talk yet? 
Oh my god, Mikey, come on. <laughs> Why do you do that to me? I love you so much. Why do you do that? So that is on my list of things that suck about this movie because it made no sense for Jaime to not be a killer and his whole family to be a bunch of bloodthirsty. We're slaying motherfuckers, man. Right, okay. but, the, but it's on my list of shit that didn't make sense, which I... Well, uh, that's the thing. You can I just say this, ending, though? But I just blew right can, through Can it. I just say this, though? You have to sure. consider also, uh, by that time, the father had... Well, well, you know, what, you know what happened, damn it, you know? Yeah, and, well, um, we and also... <laughs> Moving right. on, and also you fucking didn't come fucking poop. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is a tough live stream, Mark. <laughs> I know it's okay. It's okay. Wow, it's, I'm a goof. I'm a goof. I, I admit it. But um, you know, and also, you know, they saw the way that Jaime was being treated too. You know, like the stakes had been raised by that point. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. So it's not like they just went in being this way. Well, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to a quick little super chat we got here. Fletcher Williams, I suck at games channel, saying hail to my brothers on the panel. Well, hail Love to you, you too here on the podcast. And here's the thing that, that bothered me about the whole non-killing thing. It's like it would made sense towards the end if he tried to kill the guy but then couldn't. But here's the thing that bothered me. The suit stops him yes. from killing and then gives this arbitrary flashback about this dude's life showing that, oh, see, at one point in time, he was a poor little brown kid too just like you you can't kill him he's uh well, well, noble well, something it's like he's been like a made hitman for like the last like, <laughs> a few See, years I, I, I know this jacob and i know you know this maybe nobody else does and probably maybe the audience but the school of the americas was a cia school to teach people how to be fucking asshats so and 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 and, and i mean you know spies re rebels whatever the fuck you want to call them it still exists by the way in various mm -hmm. forms but the school of the americas was a cia run fucking revolutionary camp and it's been there forever since well i don't know watch oliver stone's jfk or any other fucking thing ever i mean it's just what it is yeah but, I, 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 I heard I, of that school and uh I, yeah. I thought that was a little too much to it was to on that it was on the nose for sure yeah. and then and there's something that i don't think people have noticed uh but in the, they had the first fight they uh blew up the statue of columbus so i thought that's a little over the top for me or but, on a nose depending on how you look yeah at it. yeah yeah so i i figured that those those touches i thought were unnecessary but it wasn't but the film was great breaker. right it was great uh, I, I i'm not who i'm not calling it great? i'm not who, calling who it who the word great on yeah the yeah who did come who use the word great i didn't hear rick say great <laughs> yeah i didn't yeah i didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say great you didn't hear me say gone with the wind john's provocateur this is not uh barbie with which jacob has called his generation citizen kane this is not across the no 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 i said it was my generation schindler's list get it right <laughs> You're right. This generation citizen Kane is across the Spider Verse. Okay, so no, I don't think I don't think it's. Uh, I never said it was great. I never said that this is a five disc Criterion like Barbie is going to get a five disc Criterion release if it's fully believed and it will win eight Oscars. This is not what I've said. I said it was entertaining. It. Uh, I thought I said it was a romp. I never once said it was great. Please do not put words in my mouth. So, no, I, I, th th that's a gross exaggeration. Did I like this movie? Yes. Was I entertained by this movie? Yes. Did I see flaws in this movie? Yes. But I did not think, oh, this is terrible. I thought The Flash was worse. I thought Quantum Mania was worse. I oh, thought yeah. uh, Shazam that was worse. Destiny. So, Oof. so what we what what am I saying? What am I, I mean? What, I mean, what am I supposed to say that I hated this movie because all the, the, that Flash was better? No, okay. the Flash was worse. Shazam was worse. If I had to choose between those two, I would choose watching Blue Beetle versus Shazam versus the Flash versus Quantum Mania versus a lot of uh, Marvel. Uh, I, I will say this. The only superhero movie I would say is worse than this that is that Spider-Verse movie. Only because this movie at least gave us the, this of giving us an actual ending to a film. Yeah. Let's, you, let's, like, you like this so, movie so like Jacob, Wonder Woman say, 1984. Oh, God. No, I'm talking about this year. I'm not talking about all time. Okay, this year. So, Jacob, you would take Ezra Miller oh. over Zolo. That's what you're oh. telling me right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what you're saying. Uh, pay attention, start saying. the camera, clip clip yeah. it. You're saying that you would take Ezra Miller over Zolo. 
As an actor, no, but his film was better than us. Okay, movie. well, there you go. So okay, I, I'm no, just I'm saying, about, bro. Oh, yeah, okay. So Mike. you have a problem with uh, with Nana blowing people away. Yeah. But uh, having a baby in the microwave, oh, that's great cinema. No, that, that's God, a starting no. point, okay? No, we use that in, in the intro for the Black that, Pill that, stream, that, too, by the way. That's, so, a, yeah. that's what Jacob is arguing. That it's a, That's what he's arguing. Moment. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well, I, I'll that's tell you I'm this. Hearing. The only things that I liked about this movie, I liked uh, Zolo as an actor. I thought he was fine. The material around him and the fact that people were stealing his uh, spotlight didn't help matters at all. I liked the father. I like his uh, relationship with his father. It was the only good thing about the movie and then guess what they kill him off okay. too thanks right. mark so, so, so you, the only two positives that i would have you, for the are film are you guys fast and the furious fans no fast and furious no well then that's yeah, why like you it. don't like this movie because you don't understand it's about family we're family that's right we're family i liked it up to no, like no, fast nine or mm -hmm. fast uh, yeah i, I like i've liked all the fast and furious movies except right. up to like Hobbs and shaw and think past that I thought was terrible. Okay, so real quick, Mikey, Mikey, you and I, you and it's I like family. Yeah, it's right. You and I like you and I like numbers. All right, and everybody here is somewhat astute when it comes to numbers on the box office. What, so, what, what, the, whoa, whoa, gonna blow yeah, up I almost got office. to fit. Okay, all right, here we go. I'm gonna finish this query. Okay, just a sec. So we like numbers. Everybody here is very astute when it comes to numbers in the box office. So, Mikey. What? Box office is a scorecard for success in Hollywood because it makes a decision on wh whether or not another film gets made in a series, or at least it should. Okay, so here we go. Is this film going to make over $200 million at the box office? No, but the purpose of this live stream is for me to tell you if I liked it or not. not yeah. To... Yeah, and look, look, Culture, I think a lot of, uh, in the terms of box office, let's face it, uh, all these past uh, movies, all these past comic book movies from Quantum Mania, uh, Shazam, The Flash, they have done great damage. I mean, Blue Beetle, uh, a more obscure character, is mm -hmm. going to follow one horrible comic book movie after another. So to say that, oh, people rejected Blue Beetle because it was bad, that's like saying, oh, the Flash opened what at number one, so that means that it must be by default better. Is that if that's the argument you're proposing because uh, it did no. poorly in the box office, or it's going to do poorly in the box okay. office? That's an absurd it, it, statement. It, it, I mean, no, that's just an I, absurd it, it, idea. I, I, I'm not talking about the opening, which is what you're directing your commentary at. I'm saying the scoreboard when it finishes its run, and the reason I even mention it is because I believe that. Okay, you know what? You know mouth... what my rebuttal is to you, buddy. You know what? Is Barbie a cinematic masterpiece? And that was successful at the box office. So there. Yeah. Well, you know, it is going to get the five disc He's criteria. Got a point and there, it's going to win eight Oscars. Snap, snap, snap. Yeah. Done. Hold on. There. Yeah, I like how you we can't, can't, you can't, you can't, drop. That, that yeah, explains an awful lot. It's an absurd idea that <laughs> box office equals great cinema. How is how do you make that uh how do you make that leap? How do well, you make, no, that, I, how do you it, make it, that idea that because overall it's going to be uh, successful financially, that somehow that's an equivalent to quality? So, I mean, well, I, I it, oh, let me let me get there, okay? Because twice now I've been interrupted when I was trying to finish. Um, so, okay, Tom Connors, <laughs> you can third time talk now. Okay, fourth time. Okay, here we go. Um, all right, let's let's do this. So yeah, can you guys shut up so Kosher can actually speak for once? I mean, geez, guys. <laughs> so so the, the truth is this. It, it 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 the the box office doesn't indicate the quality of the film. It just depends on it. It just indicates whether or not it'll get a sequel. And I will I will argue this: if a film is in whatever way a touchstone, as Mark suggested with Black Panther, or something that can inspire, it's going to create huge numbers, which will inspire the well network, the studio you know, who, whatever it is, production house of any sort and kind, including on Broadway to create a sequel or to in, extend its run. Um, so you're, you're, you're going to have to accept the box office as part of the scorecard for a film. It, I'm sorry. It's just the truth. Uh, it, it, it's okay. I mean, if you don't want to, uh, the quality of the film can be fantastic. I mean, that's why you end up with cult classics. But at the same time, they do not often inspire a, a you know a sequel. Th this film is unfortunately not going to make enough money to, um, if a studio evaluates it, to inspire a sequel. And that's a shame. And in fact, I think, and I'm going to give you another example. 
Dune 2 won't inspire a sequel. It, it, it won't it won't get us our third film, Messiah. It won't do it because it's not going to earn enough at the box office. The first film didn't earn enough at, uh, at the box office or at all to get the sequel. It was just benefited from the fact that it happened during a time when we were locked down and it was somewhat popular on a streaming service. Otherwise, Dune would not be getting its sequel. I mean, that was really on the fence. I control. think it, the re- didn't the reason they get a sequel because they basically shot them back to back. I thought that was kind of like the loophole. No, no, actually, that's a little bit of a misnomer. But that, we'll set that aside. The whole point is part of this whole mechanism is that the quality of the film can be fantastic. It'd be a great movie. And again, mm-hmm. I'm going to say it this way. I thought the film was OK. I'm going to say it one more time. It was fine. My rating, I'll give it to you when we all do our ratings. But my rating didn't put it didn't give it a terribly low score. It wasn't the worst film I've seen this year. Barbie was the worst film I've seen this year. And guess what there, Rick? Guess what? That thing is earning billions of dollars. Yeah, no I know. And, and it should be pointed out that uh, Mike is one arguing as well. It's not just me. I don't know why I get singled out. There's a reason. There's a reason. But well, <laughs> you no. know what else made you know what else made uh, a bunch more money than anyone thought it would would be Sound of Freedom. Indeed. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know if that's going to get a sequel, if it deserves one. But to me, that wasn't the best made movie. I mean, it was just because of the subject matter and the importance of it and the word of mouth that, you know, this is something you need to be supporting that kind of pushed it over. Uh, the paying it forward of the tickets and things like that, that uh, kind of added into that. But uh, Mark, 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 I just want to add to what you're saying real quick. I took a notebook to Sound of Freedom. I took two notes. You know what they were? QR code. Right? Yeah. Right? And 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 personal address. We had a personal address at the beginning of the film and a personal address at the end of the film. And it 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 spoke to everybody in the audience personally. And you're 100 percent right. I didn't have to take any notes. And 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 for whatever reason, there may have been I didn't see a lot of issues with the storytelling in that film yeah i didn't see any of it it was based on a true story it was full of uh, an amount of heart that even this film had by the way this film you guys are all you know we're all talking about we're all talking about it um this film had incredible heart i like mm-hmm. i like the family thing i think it was a little overdone but i like sure it. but you know you have to take into consideration too you know jacob pointed out a few times that this is a first time, what is it, writer, director, you know, things like that. And one of the uh, criticisms that a lot of us have had in the last few years is that, well, I know I have, is that we need new blood in this game. You know, I'm tired of seeing the same names, the same recycled stars. This is the reason why we have 85-year-old Harrison Ford jumping out of a plane and stuff like that, you know. It's time to start taking some risks. You know, and sometimes when you take a risk, it's going to be hit or miss. It's very rarely going to be a hit out of the park, you know. But what we have here is a step, like I said before, you know. All right, they're telling the story of a Mexican family. This is something that uh, a lot of people are appreciating. You know, it's something that's refreshing, a different perspective. I say let it breathe. You know what I mean? There are going to be mistakes there are going to be things that they do wrong and things like that. Of course, we could all sit there and, you know, make these notes and everything and it would be valid, you know, but the point is, is, is this reaching where it needs to reach as far as, like I was saying before, like, you know, some teenagers just going to the movies in the, on the weekend, you know, with some dates or whatever, just want to be goofy. And I think it, I think it does that. I think it supplies that, you know, so I, I, I'm not going to, and, and I know you're not, culture you're not trashing it this is for that bully over there on the other side jacob he's trashing it you know (laughs) saying that there's no redeeming qualities whatsoever and i have to strongly disagree with that because i want to encourage fresh blood i want to encourage fresh perspectives you know what i mean and and this is what i'm seeing here so it's a step 
And I applaud that. I I wasn't going to push back on your part, but now I am going to now because it's this whole idea of I I get the idea that we need new blood, but this has been a common problem because we reviewed a lot of movies and the glowing problem that I'm seeing is that Hollywood is getting new blood to do a lot of these films. The problem is they're not qualified to do the job that they're supposed to be doing. They're They're not good writers and they're not good um, and they're not good directors. They're being hired because they uh, basically uh, fill out a checkbox of what we need for a film. So it's Hey, we need a woman to direct this film because it stars a woman. Right. So let's just pull somebody well, out of the okay. ether Mikey. and then we'll put them. Was that? No, go ahead. Just finish. I, I just I, I have a question for Mikey. Yeah, it's just like they're just pulling people out of the ether who maybe they did like two or three episodes of like a TV show that you may or may not have watched, and all of a sudden they're getting a two and a half hour film based on that alone. And then you wonder why a lot of these films that are coming out right now are garbage because if you really start looking into who's writing, who's directing, who's producing, a lot of these people don't have any business being in the position that they're in right now, at least not at this stage of their career. No, and I agree with that, and I think that's part of the reason that the writers and actors strike is being extended. But I want to ask Mikey a question because he enjoyed something that I enjoyed in this film. Mikey, can you tell me what the best part of the romance stuff was in this film? Because we don't get that anymore in movies. The color, I now have color in my. Yeah, side. but you didn't add the hair, so it's like, what's the? I added for culture. I added Barbie color. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's talking about box office. No, but, I, but I, I'm talking about romance, dude. I told you what I like. Number one, she looked like a chick that was hot and didn't look like a, a questionable fucking body. Like, when I looked Mikey. at her body, I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking. It wasn't. Let me tell you, I'm used to like, is it a guy? Is it a girl? Was it a guy? Was it a girl? What is it now? Barbie. Number one. Number two, they didn't have any pronouns. Number three, he got, he got a little fucking wood when they was moving in for his first maneuver. We've all been there, done that. Number four, there was a kiss at the end. Number five, there was a little interplay during the, you know, little dance during the month. You know, come on. Okay, so so what I thought was the coolest part of the romance, right, what? is he said, well, I'll give you a ride. Yeah, that's very Mexican. Let's go on my it ride. Is. It is, yes. Okay, so this is the cool thing about uh, Latino culture is machismo, right? And so especially Mexicans. And really? So, Do tell. No, you would know. I'm trying to give you love, dude. So, but but this this particular that the end of the film where that happens blew my mind. I'm like, okay, you know, it, it turned the corner, right? You made this film better because it had a romance. He ended up with a girl at the end of the film, and you know, the, the, there was a potential there. There's a lot of potential in this movie. The problem is it suffered under the weight of some story. And again, I said this during the review, and I say it during the review I, that you're going to see tomorrow on my video. I didn't hate the film. That's the thing. Everybody's not going to take away from my criticism because I didn't hate the film. There was a lot of good there. And this is why I respect what Mark was saying. Everything Mark said, I can't, I I can't refute. I mean, this is not just a step forward to me, you know, but, but I just wanted something. I wanted something bigger for a whole lot of other reasons. And I wanted something more complete. And I felt like, I felt like I got pulled. And again, this is me. I got pulled out of the movie too many times. And it was so memorable that despite not having my little notepad with me, I ended up with all those memories. You know what? I I do appreciate, you know, what you guys are saying is because I I recently watched on YouTube a couple of videos, uh, Siskel and Ebert's greatest arguments, you know, like over the years, how they would go at it over movies and stuff like that. And a lot of people just don't have the the balls to, to present themselves that way anymore. This is what I liked. This is what I didn't like. Oh, yeah, well, this is what I liked and what I didn't like. And they just, they present it. And it's respectable, you know? So I have no problem, you know, with all jokes aside with what any of you are saying because they're all valid points, you know? And, and it yeah. is to be respected because that is something that's real. You know, there shouldn't be any movie out here that's above uh, this type of criticism. You know, like I said, for me, though, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, was it any level of entertaining? And I, I, I have to push back a little bit there you know, Jacob, because I don't think that this is an example of um, unqualified people. Yeah, okay, unqualified people coming in to write and direct and things like that is true. But there's a difference between that and unqualified people coming in to write and direct who also have an agenda. You know what I mean? Because you see that with, say, like uh, Eva DeVernay, you know, uh, uh, who's the other one? The guy who was doing Superman, um, uh, the, the black guy who was doing uh, Black Panther, the comic run. Oh, uh, um, the, 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 the Ta-Nehisi Coates. Yeah. 
You know, it's like they come in there with the express purpose of being disruptive, of deconstructing. I don't think there was any deconstructing that was going on here. This was just a matter of inexperience. That's yeah. why I keep saying it was a. I, step, I will say that you know? this, this, the, the, the angel guy, the director, he definitely wasn't trying to deconstruct this character by any means. But as far as like agenda going, like I said, there's plenty of, of agenda written stuff on here, but he didn't have like purpose of, oh, we're going to tear down Barbie or tear down Black Panther or tear down Snow White. Like that wasn't his objective. Like he was basically just using the platform to sneak in all his other crap on there. I think at one point, like Ron Brothers basically told him, like, shut up because he was risking chasing people off uh based on his twitter comments and that's the, like the last thing this film needs right now because it's already not doing great uh based on his own merit so i didn't yeah i didn't see the twitter shit so if he was doing that yeah that's a problem yeah you know, that's always yeah, gonna be a that, problem that, are... that i do agree with jacob uh because yeah, yeah the director was going on i think was it colonizers puerto rico is like a, a slave colony or something like that oh yeah and, and yeah, that yeah. And that was yeah that was absurd yeah uh, but I didn't go into this movie remembering something like that. So it, it right. was, to me, it was mm. not a big issue. I mean, it was in the back of my mind, but not something that dominated uh, my viewing. And I will say that uh, the, the things that I've heard from, from from all of you, yes, there are things that uh, I actually do agree with you. Uh, it's not by any stretch a, uh, a perfect film. And I, uh, and I accept that. Uh, but did I enjoy it? That I think it was, uh, like I said, a romp, um, a good enough time for me to to watch. Yes. So I have that. That was my my point. It's not something that I hated, that I actively hated, or that left me visibly angry, like I have with uh, Shazam, with uh, the Flash, with uh, Quantum Mania, which I can barely remember. Those movies were were boring and bad, and things that I did not enjoy. With this one, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was serviceable. It was not the best movie I've seen. And I certainly enjoyed this more than I did uh, Across the Spider-Verse, which is one of the greatest films ever made in the history of cinema, if you believe some people. So uh, th that, that's just my <laughs> point. No, there are people, I'll, I'll, yeah, there well, are people, I've shared this, that there are reviewers who have said it's one of the greatest films ever made in the history of cinema. I'm thinking, what movies have you watched? But that's that one, and nothing. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what almost lost me though. What what almost really did lose me about this movie, if there was anything, it was probably the farting uh, vehicle. Oh, the, the vehicle! End, or whatever. Oh my god! You know, um, that Cookie that mode. was something that I was like, you, you you just went a little bit too far there. You know what I mean? Yeah. If we had had more of that, then you'd hear me speaking a lot differently. Yeah. You know, it was only it was only because the movie was almost over by the time that happened that it didn't blow it for me. You know, but that. That was, nah, we didn't need that. Well, I think this is a good time to go to our, our final thoughts and our ratings for this movie. So I'll go ahead and start off uh, first. Um, this movie suck. Um, outside of my top 10 worst movies of the year, I would say that this is worse than the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie we watched on Netflix. Only because, at least you can say with that film, that film was basically filmed on a camcorder on Billy Yosh's backyard and on a Netflix budget. This one was a $125 million movie. Now, that sole purpose, I'll give it worse because there actually was more effort put into that one than the Power Rangers one. I give this one a one out of five. Jacob, if, what the maybe hell if they is wrong focus, with you? Wow. Oh, this is this is coming from the guy, by the way, who thought that the Gray Man was his worst movie of last year. So no, it wasn't. Talk. Remember, Babylon overtook it. So oh, bro, well, you know, at the, at the ninth hour, uh, Babylon overtook it. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, for the yeah, most part of the year, he said that that was his worst part, film yeah, of the year. Yeah, so. I'd sooner watch this than Gray Man. Yeah, so I'd give this one uh, a one out of five. Maybe next time, focus more on Blue Beetle and not the other secondary characters who suck. So that's my rating. And we'll go ahead and go with you, Rick, since you're so opinionated. What do you think about this movie? What's your rating? All right. My rating is a, a, probably a three, maybe three and a half out of five. I think you went in what, deliberately. What, retarded? So he, I know you're not retarded. No, I'm not. But Come on, Jacob. Down syndrome? No, you're wrong on this. You're <laughs> absolutely wrong on this. I think you went in with a I hate this movie already because I hate the director. So you went into this with the with No, nah, I only hated no, it when they sat no, there for two hours no, and seven it's minutes. It's not no, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is far worse. All right. You're 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 now just being almost vindictive at this point. It I thought it was Okay, horrible. maybe it's eleventh on my worst list. It's not yeah. tenth. You happy? Oh, now? I'm sorry. I really did not know that you thought um 
that you thought uh, uh, the Flash was a turning point in cinema compared to this. You are going yeah. way overboard on this. It's for me, it was enjoyable, uh, a good time, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It does have problems. It does have flaws, and some of you did make me think on some on some of those flaws that I did not give much thought to, but it was enjoyable. It was. You know, probably the best of the superhero movies that I have seen in the past uh, year, but I mean that I granted that uh, that's a low bar because we've seen some pretty awful ones, but I, I think your your reaction, Jacob, is over over the top in your head. I'll give it a three, uh, uh, a three, maybe three and a half out of five. All right, it was enjoyable, and that's the, and I enjoyed it. I liked it. Uh, mm. I had a good time watching it. And I can't ask for I can't ask for a lot. From that's my uh, yeah, that's pretty much my perspective. Jake. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, just for the you, record, whoa, whoa. Uh, Rick writes haikus, not movie reviews. So uh, yeah, uh, I do write haikus. Wait, 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 and they're wait, good wait. ones. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you couldn't ask a lot from the film. Well, because it's it's not like something that I care for in terms of genre. I'm not a big superhero uh, movie viewer. I'm not someone who sobbed endlessly at uh, Infinity Wars and, and thought that Endgame deserved Best Picture or Robert Downey Jr. Best Actor for the movie. But I enjoyed it. It was, like I said, I judged it for what I thought it was, a good-natured romp, uh, not perfect, but uh, passable. So I, I can't ask for... Uh, you know, turning point in cinema, like Across the Spider Verse, which is one of the greatest films ever made in the history of cinema. No, 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 no. It's it is it is uh, Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen <laughs> does whatever Spider Gwen does. But yeah, that view. And yeah, very much. Mike, what's your final uh, thoughts on uh, was it Blue Beetle? Yeah, Blue Beetle movie. <laughs> well, I think my <laughs> thoughts are well uh, have have well been established. And three and a half out of five is my number. That's where I'm going to go. Yeah, I see. It's a, a Hispanic bent going on with this film whatsoever. But hey, I'm Martin, as shocked. I'm as shocked as anybody that I liked it more than I did it. Hey, I am too. I didn't. I mean, I didn't go in and say, "Oh, this is going to be a great film." I said, "Well, let's see what it's like," and I enjoyed it's it. Not. <laughs> it's much, much better than than, uh, than uh, Power Rangers. You're you're either you're drunk or insane. Uh, Mark, uh, what did you final thoughts on this film? Yeah, I think general audiences are going to appreciate it. Um, I think it's a a, a great um, it's a great beginning. You know, um, I think uh, Zolo. I think he did a great job. I think you will see more from him because of this. I think it's going to help him. You know, in his career. And um, I would rate this on my rating of a uh, of four flushes. I would say I would give this one one and a half flush which means that yeah there's some shit in there that you can definitely do without you know so one and a half flush uh if it had gotten four flushes it would mean that it was terrible okay so it was decent it was decent i think it's inoffensive i don't see it as being overly woke and i think that um you know some people are making just a little bit too much out of this especially in the context that we're dealing with now like i said there's so many other terrible movies that are being weaponized against us this is this is all right i think barbie set the bar too low i think that's what it is but culture uh what is your final thoughts on this one this is gonna surprise everybody <clears throat> only give you one of the ratings that i use because i used to because people get it it's a six out of ten and and again, I mean, it's it's better than it's it's not it it, it and, and the problem is is that it's it, that that's not a fair rating for any movie right now because we've been subjected to so many terrible ones mm -hmm. that that actually elevates the score, and I think that's and, and that's I think that effect point. is has has permeated all of us, to be fair, um, and in in that we we expect so little from films that oftentimes our 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 expectations are met, and it, it, this one just didn't sink below what we expected to be bad. So again, I wanted more for, for, for Jaime. I wanted more for solo. I wanted the, a better, a better representation of his ability to act. I didn't get it. Uh, I, I, no, that's not true. He acts fun. Everybody in this film did an exemplary job there. That's, that's, that's not a fair criticism. I wanted a better story. I wanted a better character development. I wanted more. I didn't get it. Um, and I got continue con continuity errors. I got 
gosh, I, I'm so frustrated. I got a lot of problems with this film, and yet, you know, it still isn't as low as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Barbie. I mean, I can go down a list of terrible films this year. Um, and 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 the problem is, is that it's going to be really hard for films to reach a seven, eight, or nine now, because we do, there's not. There's nothing great coming. Mm. There's nothing great out there. I really want Dune 2 to be good, but because it's so niche, even if it is halfway decent, it's not going to inspire another sequel. It can't. None of these studios can afford to produce garbage, and yet Warner Brothers was compelled to release a bunch of films and series that didn't inspire audiences to go see them. And that's also what this film is going to suffer from. Could it have made $350 million? Sure. But in all honesty, this film should have remained a television show. That's All it. I have to say is that last year, no. uh, a lot of uh, insiders threw The Rock under the bus and tried to blame him for the fundamental collapse of the DCEU because Black Adam only made $400 million. It's like, you're pretty sure you guys would take that $400 million now considering what all these other films have done over the last year. So uh, maybe you guys uh, maybe you guys uh, went after the wrong course on that one. That's all I'm going to say there. So uh, good luck to the James Gunn clan for uh, trying to revive what's ever left of this uh, universe because that's going to be a uphill battle that you probably won't win anyway so that's all i gotta say there but um go ahead and let you guys uh, know before i let you guys do your plugs here next week on the show next week on the friday night show we're going to be reviewing a little film that is going to be a little bit out of our, our norm here but it's something that i watched last year i think it deserves a follow-up so next week's film we're going to be reviewing vacation friends 2 with john cena if you haven't seen the uh, part one on hulu go check that one out and then uh definitely watch that one before you watch uh part two i think this is actually one that could be a surprise hit of the year much like with Mark said with um what was it they clone Tyrone the one from uh Netflix I think this one has the potential to be a, a a solid comedy hit like I said that's only because I like the first one the second one we'll figure out where that one goes there but that's gonna be our movie of review for next week's show so uh, Rick you have Hulu so you don't have any excuse to not be here no so I don't have Hulu well, you'll, you'll figure it out. Uh, let's go ahead and give our lovely guests uh, here a chance to promote anything they got uh, coming up here. And we're going to start with our good buddy, Mike, uh, the first Mexican to join us here on our show uh, this week. He's, he's the <laughs> biggest YouTuber I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of tubing going on over there. <laughs> Midnight's Edge After Dark and Midnight's Edge. Uh, not a YouTuber. Hashtag. Thanks for having hey, me. I, wait, I had wait, a blast. I had a blast. I've been on vacation for two weeks and uh, I've had a blast tonight. Thanks, guys. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Aren't you on Loki's show? Yeah. Aren't you on Loki's other show? Yeah. Aren't Aren't you on some other people's shows? Aren't you on Doomcock's show? Yes. What's okay. The- so, how many shows are you on, Mikey? <laughs> Next person. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Culture uh, wants to jump in here, we can let him uh, tell you what he got coming up. I know you have a show of significance coming up in the near future. Isn't that correct? I do. Uh, tomorrow is the High Roller stream. Mikey will probably be there if he wakes up. I mean, you know, nothing like a, uh, you know, a person of a cer- certain, you know, uh, you know, heritage, you know, having difficulty getting up in the morning. But anyway, uh, no, Ooh. we've got the, the High Roller stream. <laughs> We got the high roller stream tomorrow, which is all the the top tier folks like Mikey uh, getting together and doing a public stream in the world. And then they don't realize they're in the world or they claim not to be. And then, uh, of course, Sunday night is the funnest stream of the week. Uh, It's how we kick off the next week. And Jacob's frequently there and and many other folks guest through. In fact, I'm going to try to get Mark on there at some point. But uh, we, we, we that is completely irreverent. I actually use bad words on my channel. And it's a good time. So Sunday nights are the best way to kick off your week. Uh, it's very close to your favorite podcast, which is Mr. H's show on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But that's it. Is All it Tuesdays right. and Thursdays or Mondays and Thursdays? I think it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. I mean, it's your show. What are you asking me for? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rick, uh, what you got coming up, man? Yeah, well, as mentioned, I do have my weekly haikus. And uh, I have more reviews. I'm, uh, I already have uh, a couple set up. Tomorrow for Summer Under the Stars, that's on TCM. I've got uh, Fred Astaire, I've got uh, James Stewart, and I have Loretta Young. I'm going to try to sneak in people like Barbara Sandwick. And I'm hoping to review The Black Hole for Ernest Borgnine Day on Turner Classic Movies. Uh, So yeah, just more reviews, more haikus, 
And, and yeah, that's and uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks. This was fun. I enjoyed it. All right. Last but not least, Mark. The black hole was amazing. I just want to say that. And also, thank you very much for having me on. I had a blast. This is a lot of fun. Um, Mark with a C is the channel. Just come by. I rant and I rave. I try to make it as entertaining as possible. I sing off key. What won't I do for you people? Come on by. And I also encourage uh, conversation, a lot of give and take. I'm always in my comment section. And uh, I also stream with the Dark Council every other week. I am on the dump. You know, that. You know. I mean, we're just all over the place. But come to the channel and I'll always let you know where I'm going to be in my community notes. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Keep being who you are in this world of artificial intelligence. It's more important than ever to be the individual that you are at all times. And you can't be duplicated. So value yourself. And thank you once again for having me on. Thank you, guys. All right. Then letting you guys know what I got coming up on this channel here. Um, now, Monday night, as you guys know, over the last few weeks, we've started a new podcast called the Bible Lens Podcast, where we've uh, talked about numerous uh, subjects from a biblical perspective. And I'm not saying this lightly. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, side of the aisle you're on. Monday may just be the most important stream that we've ever done here because last week, if you guys saw our last episode, we did a, a, a podcast on essentially the biblical antichrist and the false prophet and who we believe that is. This Monday night, we're answering the question, is the Dajjal are the real Jesus Christ. And this is going to be something that if you have no concept of Islam or Islam's view of the end times or the origins of it, you're definitely going to want to check out Monday night's podcast. It may blow your mind and it may absolutely scare the hell out of you once we reveal some things and put some stuff together here. So Monday is going to be a very, very big uh, podcast for a lot of us. Uh, Sam will be back. Johnny will be back. CS Johnson will be back. I think Ryland will be back as well. So m m Monday is going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, it may scare some of you guys. So check us out Monday night at 8 p.m. Tuesday we'll be back doing our thing on the ballroom podcast i think we're at episode 62 now if i'm not mistaken so we got uh, that episode coming up on tuesday nights and then of course next friday night we'll be back here talking about vacation friends 2 with john cena on hulu if you guys want to uh, check that out that'll be our next movie of the week so i just want to go ahead and give a quick little shout out to all my guests here who have joined me here tonight uh filling in for mr rob motto who you know had to take care of some uh, some things he has a job now and he, he's actually financially secure for the first time in his life so uh good <laughs> happy for mr rob motto there but he'll hopefully be back with us uh next week and then i'll go ahead and give a shot to everyone who uh, joined us throughout the course of this night here uh dark scorpio jec uh cs johnson uh roof korean uh who else do we have here uh low spec linux uh laptop joining us uh on the course of the show tonight duke nukem joining us here dk was also with us uh tonight volume dealer I'll make sure I get uh, everyone before we sign out. Fletcher Williams obviously giving us the uh, super chat earlier uh, today as well. Scott Hughes is joining us. Vulcan Lives joining us here on the show tonight. And uh, who else we got? We got uh, Joe's Atmosphere on the show. Joe! Uh, Mephisto uh, stopped by for a little bit tonight. And I think that's it. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I got everyone. Oh, yeah, Victor Fontaine for joining us here tonight. So What's everyone up, who joined us, thank you guys for joining us here for a great Friday night. Hopefully, you will guys see you guys on Monday. Like I said, Monday is going to be a huge show. You do not want to miss that one. If not, we'll see you guys on Tuesday night, Bar Room, and hopefully we'll see you next Friday night here as well. So we're going to go ahead and hit our outro. Good night, everyone. Go to sleep. It's almost midnight. What are you still doing here? Bye-bye. It's over. Go home. Get the hell out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Okay. Get out! 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 Get